everyone welcome to our youtube channel testing gyan in our today's video we are going to learn about a very important and a special method in java called constructor so let us start in order to understand this i have opened my java project and i have created one class in it called constructor now let us first take a look at the syntax of constructor and how its syntax varies from the normal method so syntax wise this is how constructor is declared I have specified the access modifier and I, then I have specified the name of the method and the name of method or constructor is always same as class name. So this is how constructor is declared. In case of normal method we also specify the return type but this is not the case with constructor. Now as we have understood the syntax of constructor now let us understand how constructor is invoked and what is the use of constructor. So constructor is mainly used to initialize the objects of the class and it is invoked whenever we instantiate our class. Now let us take a look at that how it is done. So for that I am declaring two variables int a and string b. I am not initializing these variables I have just declared them and just to see what is the value when what is their value when I am invoking my constructor so I am adding one print statement within my constructor. Now in order to invoke my constructor I have to instantiate my class so I am doing that by writing the instantiation statement I am giving the class name then the reference variable new keyword and then the class name and close it. So this is how class is instantiated. Now if I run my program you can see like both integer a and string b are initialized to their default value why they are initialized to their default value because this is a default constructor which initializes values to their variables to their default values now this default constructor even if I am not writing the syntax it will be added by the compiler in the backend so for example if I am invoking my if I am invoking my constructor then at that time also this these two values will be initialized so just to take understand that I am adding a print statement within my main method and as my variables are non static and my main method is static so I am calling my variables using the reference variable of class a or object of class now if I run my program again you can see it has again printed the values as 0 and 0 that is it is indicating that compiler is automatically adding a default constructor in the backend now as we have understood the usage of constructors and how it is invoked now let us take a look how constructor varies like what are the different type of constructor so there are two type of constructor one is default which initialize where objects to their default values and another is parameterized parameterized constructor where we pass the parameters along with the constructor declarations so parameterized constructor is used to initialize objects to user specific user specified values so now let us declare one parameterized constructor public class name int a and string b and now I am adding a print statement within this just to check whatever the value I am passing at the time of constructor invocation is it uh, really initializing the objects to that value now as my constructor is parameterized I have to also pass the parameters along with the instantiation so I am passing my integer value as 10 and my string value as uh, let's say abc now you can see like whenever I am uh, using the parameterized constructor whatever the values I am specifying those values are being initialized 
but if we take a look at this statement this statement is still printing zero and null why this is happening because in the backend default constructor is also added and current reference of class is still at the default values and why it is so let us understand this by uh, running our code in the debug mode so I'm just adding a breakpoint here just to understand that so I'm running my code in debug mode so here you can see as soon as uh, I started my execution first it is showing that the empty args array there is no value in the args array then if I go next statement you can see that it has instantiated the current reference of class and it has allocated the default values to a and b okay and also it has the initialized value of a and b for the reference which we are using using the this statement so if I run my code you can see it has printed out the values a and b but right after this statement is done its control is again back to the initial reference which is because of the default constructor so if I run it you can see it is printing 0 and null so just to avoid this we have to basically change the current reference of class and this is in Java is done using this keyword so this if I write my code, code like this this dot a equals to a and this dot b equals to b now if I run my program you will see my objects will be initialized to the value which user has specified so this is how we can use constructors in Java now there is another term called constructor overloading like other Java methods constructor can also be overloaded by changing the type of arguments or by increasing the number of arguments for example I can declare one more constructor here public constructor and I can change the type of arguments I can change the number of arguments just to overload my constructor right? and at the time of uh, constructor like at the time of instantiation I can specify the number of arguments and based on that our constructor will be invoked so this is how we can also overload the constructor I hope you guys are able to understand about constructor in case you have any questions please post over the comments of this video we will try our best to answer those questions